Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you again that Freddie's picture, Lord Jeff, is well worth breaking into your neighborhood theater to see. Better still, buy a ticket and stay out of the old Bailey. <laughs> We present now one of the most important and exciting musical premieres in the history of radio. The first performance of a novel blending of words and music entitled Hollywood, composed by Walter Samuel. The narration for the composition, which is a dramatic story of Helen Purdy, a small-town girl who wanted to be a movie star, was written by Ed Sullivan, the celebrated columnist of the Chicago Tribune News Syndicate. Helen Purdy will be played tonight by Fanny Bright. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the world premiere of Hollywood. <laughs> scene is a railroad station in a small town. Half the population has come down to see Helen Purdy off for Hollywood. All aboard! Goodbye, Mother. Be sure to write, dear. Tell us all about Hollywood. All aboard! You better hurry, dear. Oh, wait a minute. Dad's bringing over Mr. Nichols, the station master, to say goodbye. Hello, Mrs. Purdy. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hello, Nichols. Hello, Helen. My, my, to think of Ed Purdy's little girl winning a contest and going out to Hollywood to be a movie yes. star. Well, good luck, young lady. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, now you better get aboard. Chief is right on schedule. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Goodbye dear. Dad. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Nichols. Goodbye. Bye-bye, honey. Be sure to write. Goodbye. <laughs> Say hello to Garbo. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Here, miss. I stowed your bag away. Thank you. It's a present from my mother. For your trip to Hollywood. A lot of youngsters going to Hollywood have made this trip. Right in my car. Do any of them make good? Oh, yes, indeed, miss. Indeed, they do. Just as you make good. It seemed so much fun when I won the contest. But now, now I'm scared. Oh, they all feel that way, missy. You just forget it all and enjoy the scenery. It's a mighty pretty trip with a pot of gold at the end of it. I hope so. Uh, it means so much. What time shall I call you in the morning? Well, what time do we reach Los Angeles? Oh, little afternoon. Call me at nine. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Sleep well. Pleasant dreams. Good night. <laughs> passion to those lines when you read them. More oomph. Now, let's try it again. The clerk, when you walk into the scene, turn and face this angle. Sheet a bit so we'll get a full face shot. Now, let's get it this time. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Okay, for some. That's it. Roll them. Good evening, my little chickadees. Another Sunday night at the Trocadero, most famous nightclub west of the Rockies, with the usual star-studded audience. There's Al Jolson and Jack Benny, high a buck next to the back wall, Spencer Tracy, Groucho Marx, and Bob Taylor, and under a ringside table, the Rich Brothers giving each other hot foot. Good evening, Myrna. Hello, Arthur. We open tonight's parade of hopefuls with a little girl from the Midwest. She's going to try a tap dance, and her name is... Her her name, honey, what's your name again? Helen Purdy. Oh, yes, to be sure. Helen Purdy. All right, Helen, go ahead. Hit it, boys. She's pretty bad. Why do they bring those kids in here? She's still. She's from Dixie. Ah, oh, from hunger. Take her off. I only introduce these act fellows. I don't book them, and now we go on with the rest of the show. Take it away. Wait a moment, Miss Purdy. Sit down at our table. 
I've lost. It means so much to me. Oh, are you Robert Taylor? <laughs> so don't let that upset you. I'm just a small town kid like yourself. And I know just how you feel. Forget it. Every star in this room has flopped time and again. All of us have been considered washed up. So keep your chin up. Keep trying. You're a swell person, Mr. Taylor. I'll keep my chin up, and I won't quit. Central casting. Central casting. Call later. Call later. Call later. No work today, Miss Purdy. I'm sorry. Call later. Call later. Call later. Nothing today, Miss Purdy. I'm sorry. Call later. Call later. Call later. Hey, Bert, how about those prints? Come down to me right away. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Of course, Mr. Johnson. Certainly, Mr. Johnson. Certainly, Mr. Johnson. I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Bring in your book. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Make a letter. Yes, Mr. Johnson. By the way, what did you think of the preview last night? I want you to give me an honest opinion. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Terrific, Mr. Johnson. Great, Mr. Johnson. You're a genius, Mr. Johnson. It's not making money. I can't understand it. The public are morons. Yes, Mr. Johnson. The public are morons. I can't understand it. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Kill those lights. Tell the company, company they can rest for 15 minutes while we change the setup. 15 minute recess, but don't go off the set. All stand in, stand by. I want to shoot it from this angle, Charlie. I want to pick them up as they come through the door. And not too much light on the background. Tone it down. It's a dolly shop. I want to move in here and grab a three quarter. Say, who's that singing? I don't know, boss. She's just an extra. Tell her to come over here. The director wants to see you, miss. Me? Yes. Well, what's your name, miss? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make a noise, honestly. I'm not bawling you out. What's your name? Helen Purdy. I'm an extra. Well, you're not going to be an extra now. You're great. Terrific. Just the type I was looking for. And I find you right on my own set. Bert, get the headrest on the set right away. Miller, tell Wardrobe to send a man over here immediately. Smith, call makeup and ask Jack Dawn to drop everything. And come over to stage eight. You mean, you mean that? I mean you're going to be a star, a great star. Get over there and punch that tongue home. Start your cameras rolling. Now, take it easy, honey. Will my dream come true? Will I be loving you? Oh, there's a happy man unknown. Hey, she's another sheer, Helen Purdy. I read about her in a little part of the That's what makes Hollywood so exciting. Yesterday's extra, today's star. Here she comes now. Autograph, Miss Purdy. 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 Copy, boy. Get this down to the composing room right away. Tell them to use a two-column cut on page one. And here's the caption. Hollywood honors Cinderella girl. Helen Purdy, on behalf of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, I present you with this gold statuette, the greatest award which Hollywood can bestow. You better get up, Miss Birdie. We'll be in in 30 minutes. What? Oh, all right. All right, thank you. Sorry, but I've been sleeping so soundly. Oh, uh, that's all right, Missy. You probably were dreaming. All youngsters do the night before they reach Hollywood. Yes, I was dreaming. The nicest dream I ever had. I knew it. I knew it. Last trip when I rapped on the door of a young lady, just as I did for you, do you know what she hollered back? <laughs> she said, all right, Mr. Lubitz. <laughs> and sometimes they call me Mr. D. Mill. <laughs> all, all depends on what they're dreaming about. Better come along now. We're coming into the station. So this is Hollywood. Thank you, Miss. 
Thank you very much. And good luck to you. Porter, you didn't tell me. Do any of these dreams come true? Indeed they do, baby. Indeed they do. Whatever you dream is going to happen. You see this here rabbit's foot, miss? I hung that on your door all night long. So don't worry none, miss. Thank you. And now which way do I go? Just follow that porter who has your bag. You go right up those stairs and out through that door. Out through that door. I suppose every small town girl who has come to Hollywood has gone through that door. Myrna Loy passed through it. Even Joan Crawford stood here, just as I'm standing now, wondering if she'd make good, if her dreams would come true, just as I'm wondering if my dreams will come true. <laughs> Oh, 